Welcome everybody to another service video. Today I'm going to talk about the Modbus network that we use here in our control packages. We're going to talk about uh, what it is, how it works, and some common faults that we see here in the tech support team. Be sure to follow all safe work practices, especially the use of PPE. All circuits should be de-energized prior to any wiring or service. Remember, many of our controls will have more than one circuit that will need to be turned off. After de-energizing the circuit, verify that the circuit is dead, then lock out and tag the breaker. First, let me explain what a Modbus network is. A Modbus network is an internal device network where you have several devices all connected together, daisy chained together, with Cat5 cable, all this blue cable here. So for example, we have three VFDs. So because they're all daisy chained together on one network with one single cable, each device has to have its own unique address. So for example, we have two exhaust fans and a supply fan VFD. The two exhaust fan address will be 11 and 12. Supply fan addresses start at 21. And then all the other devices on the network, HMIs, core panels, filter monitors, each device is gonna to have to have a unique address to all work on this network. So every Modbus fault is a communication problem. So one of three things is gonna happen. Either the circuit board is looking for a device, it's programmed to look for a device that doesn't exist in the network. Maybe your device is powered down, you haven't plugged it in, something like that. You have a device that's in a fault condition, that'll cause a Modbus fault, or this circuit board controls these devices. It tells these devices what to do. If this board is telling this device to do something that it cannot do because of an internal limit, that'll cause a Modbus fault. Just remember that any Modbus fault is going to take about 10 to 20 seconds to show up, and it's going to take just as long to go away. So when you're troubleshooting, you're tracking down a Modbus fault, you kind of have to work at a slower pace. Because the Modbus fault, you make a change in the network. Say you change this cable, you suspect this cable is bad. You plug in a new cable, the fault doesn't go away right away. Oh, now you're frustrated because, well, that didn't fix it. Just give it a little bit of time. Give it 10, 20, 30 seconds for the fault to clear itself. Because this board is going out and pinging each device periodically, and that's when it clears and that's when it shows up. So again, work at a little bit slower pace because the faults take a long time to show up and a long time to go away. So now I'm gonna talk about some of the most common faults that we see here at tech support, especially on new startups, new jobs. As soon as you apply power and VFDs are powered up, you get some faults. These are the most common ones. Uh, the most common is just a general Modbus fault. HMI is gonna say Modbus fault and give you a device number, you know, VFD number one, VFD number two, something like that. And then you have to track it down, you have to figure out where the fault's coming from. Um, the most common problem a lot of times is the VFDs aren't powered up. You've powered up the board, you've applied power to the circuit board, but the VFDs are not powered up. That'll cause a Modbus fault. Because again, it's a communication problem. The board is looking for a device, it can't see because it doesn't have any power. So make sure all your VFDs are powered up. Uh, the other most common problem is after test and balance. You have a test and balance agent come in, he'll set the fan speed, we set fan speed on the display on the front of the hood through this circuit board. There are limits inside the VFD, and we do that because we're using direct drive fans. The fan wheels have a specific maximum RPM that they can't exceed. That RPM is calculated, and we put a limit in the VFD for max speed. Well, the board doesn't know what that limit is. You can set the board above that limit. So when you do that and you push the fans button and you tell it to run at high speed, you'll get a Modbus fault. And it just says Modbus fault exhaust fan VFD number one, something like that. The problem is, is that the board is asking the VFD to run at a higher speed than the VFD is allowed to run. That'll cause a Modbus fault and that trips people up all the time. We see it most of the time after the air balancer is finished. The last common problem that we see at startup on a new job is when you have a VFD that's mounted in a fan. So this is our supply fan VFD, for example. This could be mounted in the de dedicated makeup air unit on the roof in the fan. If that's the case, you have to run a Cat5 cable from this VFD up to the roof to the one that's mounted in the fan. That gets missed a lot. And so the guys will turn everything on, they'll have a Modbus fault supply VFD. 
And that's usually the most common problem. The other common problem we see is when you make up a Cat5 cable in the field, when you're actually making it up, putting the ends on, crimping it down, if you get two wires reversed, something like that, that'll cause a mod bus fault. So get yourself a cheap tester. It's available at all the big box hardware stores. It's a good little investment to be able to test that cable after you've done it and avoid a lot of problems. The last problem I wanna talk about is a possible address problem where you have a VFD that's addressed wrong. The time that we see this and we get the most phone calls in is when a VFD has gone bad, electrician, whoever, service guy has ordered a new VFD, installed it, and now he has a Modbus fault. As soon as he powers it up, gets a Modbus fault. Why am I getting this fault? A lot of times when you order these VFDs, if we don't have really good details, got duplicate VFDs, the factory doesn't know how to program. They don't know what address to program it for. So a lot of times they'll come out programmed for it at an address 11 or exhaust fan number one. Maybe you replaced exhaust fan number two. So now you have two VFDs with the same address, 11, that's gonna cause a Modbus fault. So again, if you suspect that it's an address problem, contact the tech support team for help on changing the address. It's kind of a little bit of drawn out process getting into the VFD. So we recommend that you contact our team for help with that. The next Modbus fault that I'm gonna talk about is when the device is actually in a fault condition. Some of the most common ones we see, especially at startup, brand new jobs, most common is a fault number eight. So you get the everything powered up, push the fans button, fans start coming up, and boom, you have an HMI just showing a Modbus fault, fault number eight, exhaust VFD one, something like that. What a fault number eight is, it's an overload fault. It just simply means that the motor just pulled too many amps. It's like an old you know, mechanical overload. So you have to troubleshoot the motor and why it's pulling too many amps. Could be that the rotation is backwards. Um, that's the most common problem is backwards rotation. Remember, you have to check the rotation on the fans visually. You can't just test that it's moving air in the right direction. They'll move air in the right direction even when they're running backwards, but they pull really high amps. Uh, the next problem could be that you have the wrong fan on the wrong VFD. So say you have two fans, you have a one horsepower motor and a two horsepower motor. You put the two horsepower motor on the one horsepower VFD, that'll cause a Modbus fault because you can't run a larger motor than the VFD is rated for. The next most common problem that we see, not as common as fault number eight, but it's fault number three. Number three is a ground fault. Um, to track down a ground fault, there's a few steps that'll help you kind of narrow down where the ground fault was gonna be. Uh, ground fault is simply just a short to ground, a direct short to ground between the VFD and the motor it's controlling. So we suggest you watch our uh, video on troubleshooting ground faults. It's gonna give you a lot more detail on how to troubleshoot, narrow down where that fault is, so you're not having to look through the entire circuit. The last two most common faults that we see, maybe not so much as startup, but you know, after long term, is a fault number four and a fault number seven. Fault number four is a temperature fault. That simply means that the drive itself is getting too hot and it will shut down and give you, show you display a fault number four on the HMI. Um, things to look for is some of these drives, the bigger drives, three horsepower or larger, I believe, uh, they get an internal cooling fan. So make sure that fan is running. The other thing to check is make sure this cooling fan, the cabinet fan is running, that the filter on top is clear. You don't have any paper sitting up here, no dust, anything like that. And lastly, that all the cabinet vents are clear so that you're getting good airflow through this cabinet to keep those drives cool. And then the last fault we'll talk about is a fault number seven. Number seven is uh, low DC bus voltage. We get that call a lot. Um, and it mainly comes after, say there's a thunderstorm that rolls through the area and the restaurant experiences a power failure in the middle of dinner service, for example. When the system comes back up, a lot of times they'll show us fault number seven and it's a low DC bus voltage. It's an internal fault to the drive. All it simply means is that the line voltage to the drive dropped below a certain point, which is exactly what it did when the power went out. So to clear the fault, all you have to do is cycle power to the drive at the breaker panel. So you turn the breaker off, wait for this display to go blank. As soon as it goes blank, you can turn the breaker panel back on this drive will reset and you should be good to go. And that should solve this fault number seven. So there are other devices and situations that can cause a Modbus fault. But just remember, a Modbus fault is always a communication fault. So the troubleshooting is gonna be basically the same. 
you have any questions on this or any of our products, feel free to contact our tech support team. Thanks for watching.